If you watched the last three parts to my series, I gave a history of Israel, from the blessings of Abraham to the exodus from Egypt, ending at the kings of Israel. It's important to understand Israel because they are the representation of Elohim to the world, how he spreads his great name and the people he used to bless the world. But this series is about the history of religions, and my goal is to educate my viewers about a majority of religions that bring confusion and draw people away from Elohim and towards Lucifer. I spend a great deal of time speaking on Elohim because he is the beginning and the end of the story. But in order to truly get a handle of what's going on, you must understand the enemy. Now I do not want to spend a great deal of time on him, and I will not dedicate any time in making cartoon illustrations to explain him. He's not worth it. I'm sorry I even have to make this video, but the information is very important to understand. So please bear with me. In The Art of War by Sun Tzu, one of his strategies were know your enemy, and I agree with that. In fact, the Apostle Paul mentioned this when he wrote to the church at Corinth. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, it says, Lest Satan should get advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. But the fact is, so many people today are completely ignorant to Satan's devices, which seems to be the main reason why this world is becoming increasingly more wicked. So I think it is important to understand the enemy, what his goal is, and how he attacks. Ignoring him and acting like he doesn't exist is a horrible strategy and leads anyone who practices it to be deceived. It is my opinion that the modern day church does not teach enough about the enemy. It has been disastrous for the church. Because the church knows little about him, he has been able to cause havoc within the body of Christ. But it's my testimony that I didn't realize how real Elohim was until I realized how real Lucifer was. When I found out that many of my favorite entertainers, athletes, and influencers actually worship Satan, I realized Satan's enemy must be real as well. And Satan's enemy is the God I serve, the God of Israel. So I decided to understand more of my enemy, which changed my life, because I began to see the world for what it actually was, and not this matrix that we've been made to believe in. So I hope this builds you up and diminishes any influence or power Satan has had over you. A famous quote of the movie Usual Suspects was, Greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. So that ends today. Let's begin. Chapter 14 in the book of Isaiah tells us about Lucifer. Lucifer was an angel. Ezekiel chapter 28 says he was a great musician, but he was created by Elohim. He did not create himself. Elohim established him. He was full of beauty and wisdom, and he was perfect in his ways when he was first created. But Lucifer got proud and began to conspire against Elohim. His heart was lifted up in his own eye because of his beauty. He corrupted his wisdom in order to promote himself in higher esteem. Lucifer created a rebellion against Elohim and recruited a third of the angels. So a war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against Lucifer and his angels. Lucifer and a third of the angels in heaven were cast down to earth. This is what a fallen angel is. Lucifer's goal was and is to ascend into heaven and exalt his throne above Elohim's. He wants to sit on the throne of Elohim, which is actually our hearts. He wants to be like the Most High. This is Lucifer's goal, and because of this goal, we have religion. All other beliefs that have been established in the world that are contrary to Elohim and his word came from Lucifer. We know this because at the foundation of all these beliefs is always someone being illuminated or receiving the light, which is actually the light of Lucifer. This is what he offered Eve in the garden. Lucifer means light bearer. Never forget his goal is to be exalted and be esteemed as the most high. And today we are at the ending stages of this goal. This whole goal and plan is exactly what a new world order is. If you haven't watched my video to understand it, there's a link to the video in the description below. The worst part about the whole thing is Satan knows he will lose. Elohim told him his fate, but his desire is just to draw as many as he can away from Elohim. Don't be one of them. In Revelation chapter 12, it is said that the devil or Satan, whichever you want to call him, deceives the whole world. And he has come down to us having great wrath 
because he knows he has a short time. In Job chapter 1, Elohim spoke to Satan and asked him, Where are you coming from? Satan told him, From going to and fro on the earth and walking back and forth on it. Remember, Peter says that our adversary, the devil, is like a roaring lion walking and seeking whom he may devour. Now, how does he work? The first part I'll discuss is through religion. He uses religion to conquer and divide. He has created the belief in many gods, which is paganism. See part one to understand this better. Then he creates a way for others to follow and worship him. From him walking to and fro on the earth, he has corrupted most minds of men. He perverts the things of Elohim and deceives the world to worship him. So when you see Israel bowing to Baal and Ashereth in the scriptures, please know this is them following Satan. In the ancient world, it wasn't viewed as religion. It was just which God you bow down to and served and worshipped. But many religions you've heard of today spur from these ancient roots coming from Lucifer. And that's why this part of the series is important. It's important to know that it all comes from and leads to the worship of Lucifer. He's spreading his false light to the world. You already have a better understanding of what paganism is. Soon in this series, I will bring up Kabbalah, Freemasonry, Islam, Mormonism, Jehovah Witness, Churchianity, and others. And in order to not continuously have to explain the whys to these religions, you simply just need to understand that Satan is the author of confusion. So many people hate religion, and then it specifically correlates to them hating Yeshua, Jesus Christ. But who they should be hating is Satan, because he's the one who created all the confusion. He disguises himself as an angel of light. And though he creates these religions, the lower level of followers never know they're bowing to Lucifer. This is deception and a big part of the matrix. A person can't say they're hashtag woke if they don't understand this. If they are rejecting Yeshua, they have just accepted some of Lucifer's false light. Another way he works is through his children and recruits who knowingly worship and serve him. When Satan tempted Yeshua in the desert, he promised that if Yeshua bowed to him, he would give him the kingdoms of the world. Many know this temptation, but act as if Yeshua was the only one tempted with this. He gave this promise to many kings and rulers of darkness. They were his seed, going back to Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, the prophecy. One scripture practically ignored by the church is 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4. It says that Satan is the god of this world. That's why James chapter 4 verse 4 tells us being a friend of the world makes us an enemy of Elohim. People that speak against the Bible most never hear this scripture. It totally contradicts the point that the Bible was written to control the world. If that was true, I don't think they put that one in. I'm just saying. But I digress. There are Satan worshippers, and their whole goal of life is making Satan worshipped as God. This has been the goal of all secret societies, and they have very carefully been transitioning the world to this worship of Satan. They've been given unlimited resources to promote this, and this has been done over the course of history. Now we're at a point where they're so dominant and in control, they no longer need to be in secret. They are now changing the way the world views everything. That's what a new world order is. With their power, they promote Satan's value to the world, dilute the Bible and the church, and work with Satan to deceive the world. You won't see an entertainer, politician, or any influencer that has a strong following gain a platform that the world endorses without them worshiping Satan, or at least bowing to him. The deal is they illustrate his doctrine to the masses, and in return they are paid millions, given fame, and some receive assurances of being safe and still established when the new world order begins. Here's a fun fact. This year the nominated actors will receive gift bags containing $160,000 worth of merchandise, including two vacations, makeup, clothes, shoes, and an armored car ride to safety when the revolution comes. <laughs> they all sell out or they're removed. Many are required to show this in some way, whether it's flashing a satanic symbol or hand sign, men wearing dresses or doing some homosexual act, women posing naked, showing the whole world, or something else. They must show their allegiance some way. The Illuminati are real, but it's not what people think it is. The Illuminati simply are the illuminated ones. There's that light again. Remember, Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. 
They're simply spreading the light of Lucifer to the world. The Illuminati is a term they've used today to show Satanism to the world as cool. There was an organization called the Illuminati. It started in the 18th century. But the real power brokers of the world are in different organizations with different hierarchies. Organizations the majority of the general public have not even heard of. Or of organizations the public thinks are within the government itself. Today's generation is just being marketed Satanism and the world is seeing who and will accept it and who will not. Do you know what Satanism is? The doctrine of Satanism is very easy to understand. It's summed up in one sentence. Do whatever you want. Well, it should be. Do whatever you want, just as long as it's not worshipping the Most High. This doctrine has been promoted to the rest of the world. Do as thou wilt. Look at Jay-Z wearing this shirt. This saying comes from Aleister Crowley, once designated as the most evil person in the world. Elohim has rules, and Satan's goal is to contradict each one. So after knowing all this, I'm sure you're trying to gather, what's the end game, right? You already learned he wants to be like the Most High. He wants to know where everyone is. That's why we're tracked and monitored. He wants to know what we're thinking and saying, which is why Facebook and other social media tools boast now that they can see now what you're thinking. He wants to be worshipped as God, sitting in the temple of God, which is twofold. The first temple, being our body, is in our hearts, replacing our love for Elohim with love for him. And second, the actual temple in Jerusalem, which he will declare himself as God. They are currently pleading to rebuild the third temple right now. Pay attention to this. Either way, this is why more people than ever need Yeshua. Yeshua is a fulfillment of the Genesis 3.15 prophecy that was said to defeat the serpent. No one makes it to the Father without Yeshua, but the world hates him. Everyone literally has a different reason not to believe in him. They hate the name Jesus or his Hebrew name, Yeshua HaMashiach. There's even people who claim to love Elohim, the Most High, but hate Yeshua. Or people who totally make the purpose of Yeshua's death and resurrection irrelevant. They are all pawns. Satan is deceiving the whole world and does this through attacking us through our flesh. Galatians chapter 5 verses 16 through 26 are great verses for anyone who wants to know the difference between Satan's influence which comes through our flesh and Elohim's. He has many different tactics. But a major one that is being used against us is his creating tolerance for him and distractions from Elohim. He has thrown sin and evil in our face that we have been desensitized to it, or just have an unhealthy tolerance to it that even if we wouldn't actually commit the act ourselves, we aren't bothered when we see others engaging in them. Or he distracts us by pushing entertainment in our face, or placing a spirit of worry or doubt upon us, or placing idols in our lives. These things, and many more, become distractions and remove us from the presence of Elohim. We are so tolerant of the devil and so distracted from Elohim's desire for us that we don't clearly see what's happening before our eyes. Many don't see how close Satan is to being worshipped to the world, and a majority don't see how close Yeshua is to returning. In the next part of the series, we will cover King Solomon, the temple, and the breakup of Israel and Judah. There's a lot of information from the enemy that you may not know of, like Freemasonry's claim to Solomon's temple and what Kabbalah is. I unfortunately had to cover this subject first because Satan really causes a lot of problems and confusion from this point on. It's important you understand why. Again, it's all about drawing people away from Elohim before his time is up. I made this video to inform you of your enemy. It is not possible in a short length of time to fully prepare you, but I hope it places a desire in you to break away from any tolerance and or influence to him that you might have. Don't underestimate him or ignore him or those that work for him. And the list is many. You must pay attention. Break away from thoughts and practices that come from Satan. Prepare yourself as the bride waiting for the bridegroom, Yeshua HaMashiach. I love you all.